interrupt our program to bring you this important message. This is not a drill. This is an emergency. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I'm Tommy Salmons. This is Year Zero. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. <sighs> well, hello. Um, we're starting off. I don't know. Uh, it's probably going to be a short episode. I know I've said that before in the past, and it hadn't been a short, but I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be short. And the reason being is that um, I actually had a recording that I was wanting to use for a podcast today in which uh, a previous guest and a friend of mine, Brad Carl, joined, and we were talking about craft beer. Unfortunately, the um, I'm I'm having a lot I'm having issues with my um, recording software, and um, for some reason I was not able to capture the majority of the interview. I only had like probably about twenty some odd minutes of what was like an hour and fifteen minute long conversation. So I'm going to have to reschedule that interview and I'm going to have to make some changes stylistically as to how I conduct my interviews and on um, what software I'll be using going forward because I cannot be dealing with um, this nonsense uh, of having interviews chopped up and missing pieces all the time so <clears throat> I will get that figured out and as I get that figured out I will let y'all know when interviews will convene until then you are stuck with me so I've been because I didn't get home until late last night. No, oh, and it was um, I was trying to get the editing for the podcast done today while I did some projects around the house. I was unprepared to tackle a solo podcast and um get into any real depth on any real subject for today. Uh, I'm working on something for Thursday, but I am far from ready from releasing that. So I am sitting at my mic freestyling as if I were Grandmaster Flash. And there, I don't know. There's a there's a couple of things on my mind, and I don't know how long they're going to take for me to put out there. But so in the last couple of weeks, I, I took a vacation and I I got home, and, you know, and I was I was hanging out at the house and I was spending time with the wife i was spending time with some of my kids and just hanging out and and really enjoying myself and i was really able to like pinpoint like where my like happy meter was and what it is that i really enjoy doing and and why it is i enjoy doing what i enjoy doing and then i had to go back to work just like every Tom, Dick and Harry. And, and I'm thinking about it and 
I can't help but focus on the biggest problem being that the necessity for money is become an overwhelming nuisance in within society and i say that as somebody who's not abject to money i don't i don't look down on people that are rich i'm not one of those tax the one percenters um but what I what I am looking at is why is it that a piece of paper on its own worth absolutely nothing, the center of so many people's lives, why is it the controlling aspect of so many lives, and why is it that that little piece of paper is the reason that I've missed out on so much of my kids' lives. And I, you know, I made a comment a while back on, on Facebook that I've always had a dream or, or an ideal for myself that I would be able to live my life without money being necessary because I've never cared about money. I don't like to buy things. It's just, I'm just not a things type of guy. I just want to live my life and relax and be left alone for the most part. That's, that's pretty much who I am. I'm just not a things type of individual. And, but it's become necessary over the last couple hundred years that people are less reliant on themselves and more reliant on objects that are or or um I wouldn't say legislation maybe uh projects of the federal government the the idea that because the federal government is pushes this currency upon us that we actually have to do business within the system of that currency is pretty ridiculous if you ask me you're allowing some ambiguous monstrosity Goliath if you will to dictate how it is you go on about your 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 daily lives and if you really stop and take a look at the mandates of government what are you capable of doing without this little greenback in your pocket what what is it that you are capable legally capable as far as government is concerned of doing you might you know be able to go till up a little bit of grass and plant some seeds maybe grow some vegetables but but go try to catch some fish or or hunt a deer without bribing the government for permission without paying the system that implements these little dollars into our daily lives And you got to turn around and you got to pay them with that currency for the ability, for the privilege of food. 
Now, I have a problem with this on many levels, but the most guttural level of which is just the the sheer idea that it is giving the government the authority above whether or not your life continues. If you go and you file and you pay to get a fishing license, in all actuality, it can be denied. Now, I've never heard of it being denied, but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen or it can't happen. They can deny you that privilege of of going and catching food or hunting for food. They can deny you the opportunity to get married. You have to apply for a license and they can deny that application. In what world are we living in which a government can control whether you do or do not eat? Let's just say for some reason, like who knows, there's a, a catastrophe. And no trucks are running to your area, to your region, bringing food, bringing clothing, all the comforts you're used to on a daily basis. In what universe does that give anybody the right to tell you you can't grab a fishing pole or a rifle and come up with some food? And at what point did citizens of this country decide they were okay with this, with these dictates? Excuse me one second. Peaky, come here, buddy. Come here. Come on. Come, come. Sorry, my dog is having a heart attack. Um, anyway, at, at what point is it anybody's business how you are coming up with your food? And why should you have to pay an entity for the right to do this? To eat. <clears throat> well, from the government's perspective, it's all about power. They want to be able to control not only the people, but the resources. And if you are able to kill food on your own and to preserve it and to cook it and to live without entering a supermarket. You're self-sufficient and they don't want self-sufficient individuals living within a collective nation. They want nationalist collectivist thinking nationalist within this nation completely subjected to the government and its arbitrary laws even if those laws are unjust even if those laws are unfair 
even if those laws are a violation of a natural right that you hold within yourself to live your life without intrusion. Now, one of the cool things about living where I live is I can survive with with without this intrusion. I have a pond on my yard that does have fish in it. I have animals in my yard that I can eat if necessary. I have plenty of room to grow as many vegetables as I would like that will grow in this region. But not everybody is 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 in this boat. And it's been we've we've all been conditioned to walk this treadmill in which we we get up out of the bed and we ride the treadmill into the kitchen and we drink our cup of coffee and then we ride the treadmill out to the car and then the car takes us to the office or to our place of employment and we ride the treadmill throughout the day doing the duties of our employment and then ride the treadmill back out to the car nine hours later and ride and the car takes us back home and we get out of our car and we go back in our home and we look in our refrigerator and we look in our pantries and everything that's in there has been mass produced by some big corporation, the same corporations that own all the media outlets, the same corporations that are pushing war down our throats, the same corporations that get rich by war occurring. And we just devour their product and then go on and do it again the next day. And why is that? Why why would we rather ride a treadmill and ride that that ride that's been laid out before us as opposed to carving our own path? Well, I can tell you why. Everybody prefers to ride to drive down a nice, smooth freshly paved road over a pothole infested gravel road. Why? Because it's easy. And what, what government has, has done is they've taken advantage and they've recognized that everybody is looking for the path of least resistance. And they've un- they understand that if they put a tax, which is what buying a license is, it's a tax. They put a tax on fishing or they put a tax on hunting. Then people are going to go to the supermarket. More impoverished people are going to go to the supermarket to where food isn't taxed. And so they've, they've structured a society in such a way that they not only control the finances within that society, but they control the food and the production of that food and how the citizens of this country acquire that food. And I'm thinking it's it's as it's as if to me in my in my own mind that this entire system intentionally or not has afforded a, a set amount of individuals 
elected by citizens to go sit in a special seat to dictate to those citizens what those citizens can and cannot do essentially enslaving those citizens to the system that they are supposed to be controlling through the elections. And I can't help but wonder at what point did anybody believe that that was what liberty was, that that's what freedom was or did the actual everyday citizens always want that false sense of security over that sweet taste of the of danger that liberty brings i I see so many people that defend wrongful actions of the president of the United States or the government of the United States. And I can't help but wonder where did this cognitive dissonance come from? Or is that the default? Is the default of humanity so insecure that you're always looking for someone to control you so that you are able to live the life of least resistance? I don't know. I don't know if that's actually the default position of humanity i'm not a psychologist i'm not a psychiatrist i have no idea i'm not a sociologist i'm not sure if that's the default what i do know is it's like a plague that continues to hover around and what it's led to is extremely cancerous One of the crazy things that I see in modern society, now people blame social media for this. And there's no doubt that social media creates, can, doesn't by necessity, but can create echo chambers. I've been unfriended by more than one person because I've said something that offended them. Usually it's about police. It's, it's really strange how sensitive people are whenever you say that the police are immoral or unjust in their actions, arresting people for nonviolent crimes. People get very offended by that. I guess because everybody knows a cop. Everybody knows at least one police officer. But what makes you think I'm attacking your police officer? I'm saying this is unjust and immoral arresting somebody from, for owning a plant, finding somebody for, for having a light on their vehicle that went out, finding somebody for, for fishing without government permission That stupid song's coming through. My wife's out, outside watching some stupid video and I can hear it and it's it's triggering my microphone. I'll try to edit that out. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, but instead of of getting together as citizens and saying, you know what, you're right. Like, I shouldn't have to buy permission from anybody to to braid hair. I shouldn't have to buy permission from anybody to eat. I shouldn't have to buy permission from anybody to 
live a basic life without the involvement of the government or those around me. If I want to be a hermit and live in my little house as if it were a little cave and not interact with the public, why should I still be paying taxes? What, what, what responsibility do I have those to those people that I want to avoid the most in my entire life? But instead of that, what we have is we have this echo chamber environment in which people are afraid to have their, their ideas challenged, especially ideas they don't know how to defend if challenged well, even semi-well. Because I can't say I even always challenge people properly or, or, or completely on target, but I do it so much and in so many times you don't even get a response, not one single response that people can't defend their position. You can't defend your position. If you can't defend your position, why is that your position? That doesn't make any sense. When your position is that we must own the libs or all Republicans are racists, you're not holding truth to power. You're doing exactly what you're being trained to do. You are turning your focus laterally and you are punching laterally instead of punching up. And punching up is the only thing that matters. Holding, holding power to account. Speaking truth to power. That's where bravery lies. Punching laterally. Owning the libs. Republicans are racist. These aren't... This isn't bravery. There's nothing brave about this. You're being ridiculous. You're being insane. Because the only people that can truly put a hurting on you and truly punish you are those people whose checks are signed by the state. And unless somebody's check is signed by the state, I have nothing to say to that person as far as insulting wise. I'd rather tell somebody, I understand where you're coming from. I see your point. I think you're wrong. And here's why. And go on about my day as a rational human being. Then to get completely bent out of shape because I have to defend some douchebag who's trying to pass laws that restrict my freedoms. What? I mean, that's ultimately what you're doing. And why do you somehow identify with that person? You don't agree with them a hundred percent. I can guarantee it, but you act as if your entire identity depends on whether or not your friends agree with you about this particular individual. And this is insanity. As far as I'm concerned, I've been seeing it for so long. I've been watching it. I've been watching people take it so personal and I'm just completely dumbfounded by the entire thing. They have gotten most of the United States to view politics in the same way they view college football. And it's really odd. It's really odd to watch because I don't think any of these people should be in power. So I'm watching from the outside. I'm looking in going, well, this is extremely strange to see grown adults, grown adults who've worked their entire lives, who've killed themselves the entire lives, tie their identity to some person they have never met in their life that is doing things that will hurt them and they will defend it to the death. 
it's one of those really, really, really strange things that you see as you get older. A kid, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you know, your kids being abused by their father or their mother and still defending that father or mother, yeah, they don't know any better. But a grown adult being abused by a government and then continuously defending that government, yeah, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. You should know better. Every single one of you should know better. But, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. I wanted to just give y'all some of my thoughts since my episode was uh, a catastrophe today. So (laughs) I hope if nothing else, we strike up a conversation about this late.